Hi, my name is Mark Downey and I'm a program manager on the Visual Studio production diagnostics team. And I wanted to talk to you about some of the new capabilities we've added to the snapshot debugger in Visual Studio Enterprise 2019. What we have found is that diagnosing issues in production can be challenging at the best of times. It can be difficult to determine what line of code, data or configuration value may be at the root of the problem. Some of the reasons for this disconnect include inadequate logging, that is to suggest critical information uh, is already missing, or some data is difficult to interpret without the context of where it came from. In many instances, we are unable to even replicate the production data in our test environments uh, because of general privacy concerns and standards like PCI or even specific laws like HIPAA. Then some issues only reveal themselves at scale, uh, requiring you to be at the scale of production during a debug session. So with all these things in mind, what can we actually do? We released the Snapshot Debugger about a year ago, and it has provided Azure developers with a new tool to help diagnose issues occurring in production. Unlike traditional debugging, where you halt the process to investigate a line of code, the Snapshot Debugger actually makes an in-memory copy of your process. And it does this really quickly. It takes somewhere between 10 to 20 milliseconds in most cases. So while you use Visual Studio to inspect the details of a specific moment, your live process can continue to serve active users without disruption. It is in fact secure as well. And access to this feature is configured by role. It also works at cloud scale, so regardless of which instance or pod the problem code executes on, you get the opportunity to safely inspect the results. Snapshot Debugger supports several new Azure service scenarios. And in this particular demo, we're going to focus in on Azure Virtual Machines running Windows with ASP.NET Core. For this demo, I'm going to use DOS Blog Core, an open source .NET blogging engine. I actually use this blogging engine and have over 10 years of content in the cloud. I have a real bug that I need to fix, but rather than download all that content to my local machine, I'm going to review the issue in Azure using Visual Studio on the Snapshot Debugger. And this app, by the way, is running under an Azure VM under IIS using .NET Core. So the problem is that my category section do not appear to be working consistently. So I have all these categories of all the blog posts I've ever created, and .NET is just one of those categories. I have a list of posts that have .NET as the category, and if I select one, um, I should see that the categories listing in here includes .NET and ASP.NET. If I click on .NET, I should see all those categories again, but I'm actually not seeing anything. And I really don't know why at this point. So I need to find out um, why my data isn't presenting in the way I assumed it should do. So to get to the bottom of this, I'm going to open Visual Studio Enterprise 2019 preview and attach the snapshot debugger to my web application. And I can do that a number of ways. The traditional way, the original way was to use the Cloud Explorer and right click on the resource you're interested in. Um, also, it's in the list of actions um, down at the bottom here. Um, so the new ways to do this are also through the debug menu where you can attach the snapshot debugger here, um, yeah, right here. And then also we've got the traditional F5 drop down menu option as well enabled. And then finally the publish um, page also has an additional action on it that allows you to attach to the snapshot debugger. So I'm going to go ahead and use the debug menu this time, and this will bring up the snapshot debugger dialog. I can select my VM in this case where the app is running and it's running under IIS. I'm going to select an Azure storage account to associate with this session. I have already installed the remote debugger extension, so I'm not going to do so again here, but just for reference, installing the remote debugger extension would need to open up specific set of ports on the VM. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and not do that this time, but I will attach. And this whole attach process will make sure that the remote debugger is installed and enabled. It'll make sure that the site extensions in, are in place and active. And it will also warm up, the whole process will warm up our sites preparing for snapshot debugging. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the category controller while this is still uh, starting the session. And this looks like it's calling a private method, which calls my category manager uh, to get the list of entries for that category. So can, we can look at that. And then this calls the data service layer, which is probably responsible for pulling the data from disk. So let's take a look in there. 
So our category name is passed into this list and compared against this list of URL safe categories. And actually that looks like an actual dictionary because that's using contains key. Yep, that's a dictionary. So that's a string value pair. I am passing in the name of the category and comparing it to this dictionary list. Um, so I'm going to think this is a really good place to set a snap point. So the snap point is where is much like a breakpoint, except for it's not going to stop my um, process. It's just going to make a copy of that process. Um, and I want to see what the category name is when it gets here, and I want to see how it's what it's comparing it against. So I clicked in the gutter uh, where the code. I know the code is going to execute, and I hit. Um, and actually, I, I want to do it under a specific set of circumstances. I want to capture one snapshot under a set of conditions that I'm going to define. Um, and I'm going to say uh, that condition should be when the category name is equal to whatever gets passed in that I know is failing. And I believe in that in this instance, it is um, net. Yeah, uh, yes. So that's .net. Let's go check that URL. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's, uh, and that's probably actually revealing what my problem is. So let's go ahead and close that. Um, as you can see, it's suggesting that this snap point is not activated yet. So I actually need to start collection. And that is to suggest it will push this collection plan up to the cloud for me, up to Azure and set it in place. Uh, so it's deploying this snap point. And, and as you can see, now that it is uh, activated, it's actually full rather than hollow. So uh, my snap point is activated. I'm ready to capture this data. So let's go to Explorer or Edge and refresh this particular URI. And let's see, I have captured a snapshot. I have a snapshot in place. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit view and get the data from it. And this will hydrate uh, Visual Studio. But as you notice, this whole website it's still active. No one stopped from going and visiting it. Everybody can get to every URL. Nothing is stopped. What we've done is make a copy, and I'm just going to attach to that copy here. And what we've done is make a copy in memory on that VM, and this process is streaming that copy to Visual Studio for us to review. So it continues to load the snapshot here. And there's, there it goes loading the symbols uh, to get the snapshot ready. And give that a few moments. And there we go. All right, snapshot is now uh, loaded. And you can start to see that I've got um, indications and data inside URL safe categories. In fact, the, the name value pairs are all listed here. Um, I get to see all my data. This is all the information it picked up from the XML files which contain my data. And as you can see, the category name that gets passed into the method um, is being compared against this dictionary list uh, and the um, name value pairs is failing because if I look through this list really quickly, there's nothing called net. So it's trying to represent .NET as net and it's failing because that's not in my list of my dictionary of categories. Um, so I've kind of figured out what the problem is at this point. Um, so a couple of in other interesting points here is that the call stack is perfectly valid. I can kind of go back. Now I have to look at variables that were in scope but it might be useful again to see the call stack I have traversed. Um, so we also, um, we could also set something else. We can set up a log point. So we have snap with this idea of snap points, but we also have log points and log points are additional logging I might want. Um, that would reveal about the data that was there. So let's say for example, I wanted to get the list of, uh, values that were in that dictionary. I could do something like cache.url URL safe categories. I could do, so we could output all this data by doing string join, maybe. Uh, we could 
put a new space here uh, or excuse me new line here and that should output the data so rather than uh, inspect the data in the window I could throw it all to the output window and look at the data that way so I'm going to update my collection plan I'm going to send it and it's actually the indication is that it sent it that's um, shows that that is active um, and if I go over to edge and run that category again and I know what it is now it's net and I know it's bad but at least I'll be able to hit that log point collect data and there's the log point collected and that's the data I wanted to see so if I'm missing logging that would aid debugging in production I can insert new log statements without rebuilding or redeploying and I can elect to send that output to a log service if I desire or to an output window. You can try this feature out with Azure App Services running on Windows as well as Azure Virtual Machines and Azure Virtual Machine Scale Sets for ASP.NET Core 2.0 and above on Windows or ASP.NET 4.6.1 and above. It also works with Azure Kubernetes services running on ASP.NET Core 2.2 and above. Please download the latest version of Visual Studio and try out these features. We would love to hear your feedback. To report issues, use the Report a Problem tool in Visual Studio. You'll be able to track your issues on the Visual Studio developer community site where you can also ask questions and find answers to other things. Thanks for listening.